Comedians really do have a way with words, don't they? And in this video, they are all discussing Australia. Now, I must mention this video is sponsored by Ridge and they make the best wallets I have ever owned. There is an honest reaction for you. And I'll let you know more about it later on in the video. Well, you, whereabouts in Australia are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. So you weren't affected by the flooding, were you? <laughs> is that why you've sat so high up? <laughs> Worried it'll happen again. This time it happened in a different place in Australia. Topical, that one. I, I'm here with uh, my family. Uh, we're traveling in Australia. Uh, this is too high. Uh, and it's, it's a jail. <laughs> it's a jail. You all, you're prisoners. And you don't like to talk about it. You're sensitive about it. You want to forget the past and move on into the future like every country that has a suspect past. <laughs> What, what I love, actually, when you bring up about being prisoners uh, and, and convicts is people justify whether or not they were from convict background or they paid their way over. It, they have to justify it, it seems. And really, it doesn't matter. No one really cares anymore. But it is that sense of, oh, no, 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 I wasn't a pris you know, from prisoner backgrounds. Don't worry. It's in the past. You know... It's a totally inhospitable place. You shouldn't be here. Uh, the sun, you live about three quarters of a mile from it. And, um, <laughs> I've seen insects walking around with knee pads. And you, you fling yourselves into the sea when you're not actually walking around audibly crackling in the heat. And it's, yeah, it, obviously it's so hot in Australia and everything's by the sea, other than the inland stuff, obviously. But... So people love the sea in Australia, but when I think of Australia's deadliest animals, I normally think of jellyfish and sharks. Uh, uh, any other deadly sea creatures? Maybe some sea snakes or some saltwater crocodiles? The most dangerous things I think of are in the sea, and you guys love to spend time in the sea. Really? Just really? No. <laughs> The sea is full of jellyfish and sharks and other things who hate you. But you persist <laughs> in living here. So I, I would say, I've not watched this. I've never seen this before. How the hell did I get that in the same order? I honestly have not seen this before. Jellyfish, sharks. <clears throat> we flew here, you know, and with the children and everything who are pressing the buttons and not sleeping and actually getting energy from the hatred that they inspire in you on the plane. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but so you all really come from, from Irish prisoners, and, and that was because the English sent you here a long, long time ago. And um, the English were very good at that, you know, at, at founding colonies and so on. A lot of it was because of the voice, the English voice. Irish people you never see starting a colony you know, willingly, because Irish people wouldn't turn up. They would say, we well, go over there, it's got loads of stuff, are you coming? I will, yeah, I've just got to meet my brother for a quick drink. And uh, <laughs> do it, I have to pick up. Do you think, do you think the Aussies actually got their drinking prowess from the Irish? Not really the English conv convicts, but the Irish convicts. Because the Irish know how to drink, right? Some knitting and thing, I'll be the, no. But, the English were very good at it because they have that voice, you know, where they can go anywhere in the world. They go to Africa, say, and they say, What's your name? Hello, hello, what's your... Um, Fubu, hello, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh, listen, Um, Fubu, Fubi, I've got some beads here in my pocket. Would you like to see them? Would you? Would you like... Would you want to listen? Clicky-clacky sound they make. Aren't they pretty? You keep those. You have those. You enjoy those. Walk away. They're yours. I'll just have from where you're standing to the horizon. <laughs> they were all very good at that. But anyway, so it's a, you know, it's a jail you live in. It's lovely, you've done wonderful things with it. All I'm thinking of now is a normal prison, right, with some curtains over the windows. That is literally what is in my head right now. Just the bars behind with some nice curtains going across that is in my head and so basically what he's saying is that is what australia is now prison 
those bars up, just some nice, nicely designed curtains going across. Well, that's what means in my head anyway. We are all still in denial. The only real reason I came, I don't want to see Uralu or Wuralu or <laughs> any of your other garden face exhibits. Uh, the only real reason I came here is to kill a wiggle. Kill a wiggle. <laughs> the stupid thing is, I've not. I know who the wiggles are uh, because of you guys telling me. But I've still not watched the Wiggles. But I know exactly what the, the why it's funny because the Wiggles are that sort of childhood band thing, aren't they? And I can understand why it's funny. Uh, and yet I've not seen them. Wild fucking country. I just learned what an Aboriginal was. That's cool. For the last week I've been walking around like, man, black people out here love picnics, dog. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Holy shit! Uh. Black people love picnicking, bro. Straight away, isn't it interesting the difference between uh, an Irish, British, and then an American comedian? You know, Jimmy Carr, Dylan Moran, nice and calm. You know, just just calm. Tells their stories in the way. The Yank comes on, and it is loud. It's in your face. Yo, man. Oh, just calm. Calm a little bit. Calm a little bit. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see what he has to say. Every time I see black people, they're fucking picnicking. Literally every time, on the grass, picnic, picnic, picnic. Black people in America do not fuck with fields. They got PTSD <laughs> from that shit. That's, there's a sordid history with the oh. fields. You see a black dude on grass back home, he's being tackled. <laughs> By a football player or the police, but either way. <laughs> I was, I, the first thing that came to my head there was the police tackling a black man to the ground. Not football, but yeah, close enough. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't believe it. And finally, some Australians started explaining to me, like, no, nah, they're not black, they're aboriginals, and like, we got like a real, you know, shitty past with them. It's been very hard to get them to assimilate to like white Western culture. And I'm like, what? <laughs> They're relaxing in a park drinking wine. <laughs> Mission accomplished, Australia. <laughs> How white do you want them to be? Give them some fucking cheese and crackers. They're French. <sighs> to be fair, actually, look, they're not black, are they? Aboriginal people aren't black. Um, but if you want to pretend that Aboriginal people and black people are one of the same, uh, then yeah, the Aboriginal people in Australia have it a lot better than some of the black people in the United States, right? Controversial subject. Very controversial subject. It's just crazy, man. I know you're not supposed to talk about them, so whatever, I won't talk about them. <laughs> That's it, no more, no more Aboriginal jokes. We went to a strip club out here, I saw a stripper with pussy hair, that shit was crazy. I was like seeing a beeper again, I was like, what? <laughs> Throwback Thursday, holy shit. Pussy hair, fuck. Dude, she had this thick patch of pussy hair. It was like a thick mat of pussy. There were two Aboriginals sitting on it, bro. It was crazy, like, bro. Um. <laughs> okay, that just sums up. That just summed up the American comedy, doesn't it? And and this isn't clever. This is not clever comedy. Dave Chappelle, he is a clever comedian. This dude, Mr. Schultz. That's not funny. I like. That's not funny. Like, come on. Use, use your intelligence if you have any. That is a poor, poor joke. Let's hope he moves on quickly. No bullshit. I traded her a dance for some goon wine. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 oh, man. He is poor. He is really poor. Um, and that's, that's the problem sometimes. As I said, it's not even observational comedy, was it? 
you know, you look at people like Jimmy Carr. He is so clever when he is his when he's making jokes. That Schultz dude, nah, don't let him back into Australia because he's not very funny. Not very funny. Let's get back to Jimmy. So I'm on that text with an Australian girl. She said mid coitus, whilst fucking. <laughs> she said, "Have you slimed yet?" Ah! Ah! Have you slimed yet? Ghostbusters. <laughs> that is disgusting. Oh, please. Right, in the comments down below, if you use the words slime jet to mean that, please tell me, and then I can tell you how disgusting you are. Oh, God. Never say that to a man. That is vile. That's worse than using the word moist. Ricky Gervais. I love Ricky Gervais. Let's go. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The Earth is one big rock. <laughs> Australia's at the bottom of the big rock, and they're trying to hide under it. <laughs> God, well, you are a maniac. You're just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't. I love Carl Pilkington. If you haven't seen The Moaning of Life, please watch it. Carl Pilkington is priceless is just priceless Stephen Merchant is so funny that awkward lanky guy comedy just amazing but no <laughs> just because that's like saying there should be loads of spiders and snakes and deadly animals on the Antarctic oh <laughs> oh why doesn't that work because like there's no real upside down and bottom of the earth is it it's all relative to what it's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay, read on. Well, I spent three years of my life. All right, let, let's get to the advert. What I want you to do is check out this next bit of footage from my vlogs and see what the big problem is around my backside. The common problem is this big fat wallet in my back pocket. It is so uncomfortable and big. But I've partnered with Ridge Wallets. Check that out, the forged ember wallet. Look at the difference. Just check out the difference. There you go, check out the difference. I was skeptical though. I was really skeptical because I like to carry cash. But Ridge has me covered with this cash strap. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, and I've managed to fit about 200 pounds in 20s and 10s, and even some business cards under there as well. Problem solved. The second thing I was a little bit worried about was I know that in this changing world with wireless theft is a problem. It's so easy for someone to tap a payment machine near your backside and they will have your money. But this is RFID protected. They're not going to be able to get through your cards. Now this is brilliant because watch this. Pew! Up you go. Card out. Scan. Back in. It's so, so easy. And honestly, this is now my wallet of choice. I'm not going back to this. That can go over there somewhere. Ooh, that's going over there because I don't need it. This is perfect. Now, Father's Day's coming up in the UK. Why not treat your dad? In Australia, Father's Day is in September. Treat him. Treat, I've given an early, an early Father's Day present. Now, if you use my code ROBREACTS, go to ridge.com slash ROBREACTS, use the code ROBREACTS, then you will get not 10%, but 15% off a new Ridge wallet. Link will be down in the description. Check them out. Well, I spent three years of my life in Australia. In actual fact, I didn't spend three years. I spent 18 months. But 18 months in Australia is like three years anywhere else. <laughs> star. Um, an interesting thing, I know the name Dave Allen. However, 
I have never seen any of his comedy. So this is the first comedy I've seen of Dave Allen. Um, let's hope it's a good one. He seems like he's a clever comedian, definitely. And they're very, the Australians are very proud of the country. I left London on Friday at 4.30 in the afternoon. I flew all through Friday, all through Saturday, all through Sunday, and I arrived after 36 hours on an aeroplane. I arrived and see my eyes are hanging out. And the fellow says, how did you find Australia? <laughs> and I said, I got off the bloody plane and it was there. <laughs> The Australians actually, I, I know the Irish have a funny way of talking, but the Australians have also a funny... They add I-E onto a lot of words. Noise. I was there around Christmas and I said to a fellow, I said, what are you going to do on Christmas? He said, well, I think I'll get up. Chrissy die. <laughs> I'll have my brackey. <laughs> I'll pick up the cozy, go for a dippy. Watch a game of footy, have a game of drinkies, and then I'll come home and have a yummy, yummy Chrissy Dindin. <laughs> he was 64 years of age. <laughs> Adding I Ian just sounds like a baby. <laughs> they love the, they love the, in Australia, they love the booze. But the beer is so cold. <laughs> it's like you have to have gloves to... That's, that's why we have the, they have the little cosies, don't they? I said, I've been sent them. That, actually, surprisingly, they are really, really nice to have when you're drinking. If you've got a can and you've got one of the old beer cosies, I highly recommend it. But he is so true. I can, like, I'm a cider drinker, as lots of you may know. You've seen me drinking some on the, on the watch alongs. You've seen them on the vlogs. There is... Ah, uh, having a cider when it's freezing cold. It is so difficult to drink. Just let it warm a little bit. Put it out in the sun for five minutes. Three beers and you look for the moon. Everything's got to be cold. And you get a tramp, a wino, goes into a chemist shop and said, uh, do, you have a, do you have a bottle of metal-lighted spirits? And the chemist said, yes, gives him one. He said, What's the matter? Don't you have a cold one? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> they drink. They drink. I, I arrived there and somebody said, Would you like a schooner? I thought he was going to give me a boat. <laughs> and they're always telling me, they're always, as soon as you arrive in Australia, they say, Watch out for the sharks. That's not what they say, Dave. I'm fed up of hearing it, but actually what people say is, watch out for the drop bears, but it was probably after his time. Um, bloody drop bears, I'm fed up with hearing about it. I know what they are, I know the joke. Just stop with the drop bears, please, please. Sharks, anyway. And they don't say a shark will eat you or chew you up. They say he'll take you. <laughs> You're gonna be taken by a shark. <laughs> and I think to myself, well, if he takes me, he'll die of alcoholic poisoning. <laughs> and I'm swimming. But in the back of my mind, sharks. I'm thinking of it. And I'm swimming away. And a fellow goes underneath me, swims on. I don't even see him. And he comes right under, and he goes with his finger, shoo, down my stomach. <laughs> so, nobody swam in that sea for about three days. <laughs> The nearest thing I have ever done to in my life. I was across the water on the beach. I was when I was out there. I I hired in the, down on the coast a bungalow kind of shack hut, which we used to go for weekends. And we always get down there and have a few beers and swim and eat, laugh, joke. And then one of these Australian friends of mine said, uh, "Hey, dive." Uh, you want to be uh, careful about the grass around here. Uh, it's getting very tall, and a lot of snakes, they live in the grass. You want to cut it. And I said, well, I'm never here. I only come here every six weeks or something. How the hell am I going? He said, well, buy yourself a sheep. <laughs> Where is this? 
this head coming? Him, and he laid up on the grass. So I thought it was a very good idea. I bought a sheep for five quid. Tied him up. Six months later, he's as big as a house. <laughs> Wool everywhere. <laughs> Somebody said, you want to get him sheared? He'll dehydrate. <laughs> So I go back to Sydney and I go through the yellow pages. Sheep shearing. And unknown to me, I am ringing up the biggest sheep shearing company in the world. <laughs> and I said, I'm making inquiries about sheep shearing. The woman said, uh, one second, please. And I was, I believe you're making inquiries about sheep shearing. I said, yes. He said, well, let me tell you our rates first. We sheep... Uh, we shear sheep uh, per 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. We've got different <laughs> rates. We've got piece rate. We, uh, we do hourly rate, weekly rate, monthly rate. It all depends on the number of sheep that you have, percentage loss, percentage gain. <laughs> How many sheep do you have? I said, one. <laughs> he said, really? What's his bloody name? <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, and I mean this very sincerely. The Australians are perhaps one of the most hospitable and generous people in the world. I mean, they, if you're stuck for a night, they'll give you a bed. If you haven't got a drink, they'll give you a drink. If you've got no money, they'll give you money. The food, they'll take the food off the plate and give it to you. It's those white Australians I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Dave Allen, when my when my granddad was alive, I remember going to the social club, the working men's club, um, or, you know, on a Saturday, Sunday, Sunday uh, afternoon, and he always had these these jokes that you had to wait for the punchline, and obviously as a child, sometimes you got it and sometimes you didn't, and that's almost what I got here, and sometimes it's like my brain's ticking trying to work out what he's on about and then sometimes you just get it and that punchline hits you and it, it this just reminds me of my granddad uh and which is which yeah is obviously nice memories for sure which which of these comedians do you think are the best at telling their story about australia for me i think it's dylan moran but that's probably only because i am so grumpy i'm so grumpy and that resonates with me. Moaning about things resonates with resonates resonates with me highly. Very good. And then you've got the Ricky Gervais podcast, which was the ramblings of madmen. Let's just say. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our sponsor for today, Ridge. Make sure you go to ridge.com forward slash robreax and then use the code robreax to get 15% off one of these wallets. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>